And uh, that mutual friend said, y- you know, you two are weird. You should talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Chewing the Fat. I am your host, Big Rob. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your support on Instagram. Checking out the website at chewingthefatbr.com. Uh, all of the listens, all of the likes, the ratings, the reviews. I, I really appreciate that. All the folks who have bought coffee for me to help support the podcast. Thank you so much. Today is a very special episode for me uh, because I'm recording this with someone I literally have known his entire life, actually before he was even knew he had a life, I've known him. Uh, my son Jacob Smith is joining me today. Hey, Jacob. Hey, Dad. So, how you doing? Uh, uh, well, today's a today's an interesting day for me. So, as it is an interesting day for you as well. Um, so that everyone knows, Jacob is uh, packing his bags and heading off on the next great adventure of his life. Moving to Cornwall, England, mm-hmm. uh, to marry his fiance Holly. Of uh, they've been together for about three years, and uh, uh, to go start his his life over in England. So there's lots of questions about that. Um, you know, so how did this happen? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, with anyone, they always ask. They're like, "How did you two meet?" Well, clearly we met online and we have a mutual friend, uh, a couple of mutual friends. And um, this was back in, you know, uh, 2017, 2018, Mm -hmm. uh, when we first met each other and we were in a discord call uh, and uh, she was in the process of fully getting divorced with her ex-husband. I had been single for a really long time, which is shocking for me because, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm as handsome as you, you know? Right, right. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, we got to know each other a little bit. And after a while, you know, my friends knew I was, I was looking to try and find someone because I was single. Mm-hmm. And uh, that mutual friend said, y- you know, you two are weird. You should talk to each other. <laughs> 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 and... I mean, you know, you get it honest from your friends, you, you know, <laughs> yeah. they, they tell it how it is. And, and sure enough, Ollie and I, we're, we're a little strange, but you know, it's cause we both love video games. We love anime, you know, we just, the, a lot, we have a lot of mutual things in common. And, um, mm-hmm. honestly, originally when, when I was pursuing trying to talk to Holly, uh, she didn't believe me <laughs> cause The same mutual friend, when we first ever met each other, they were like, don't worry about Jake. He's he's like this (laughs) because I had gotten to a point where I would just be flirtatious with anyone just to, Mm. you know, throwing all the lines out or whatever to see whatever caught. Mm -hmm. Um, And so she didn't believe I was fully interested in her. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know. You, when you find someone that you really click with, you know, you, you, you pursue them and you're persistent and that's what I did. And, you know, sure enough, we were talking privately one night and I was like, I, I really, I really do like you. Let's, let's make this a thing. Let's, let's, you know, whatever. And instead of saying, yeah, yeah, I like you too. She goes, we'll talk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so we talked, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. and Three and a half years later, here we are, you know, moving in uh, and definitely pursuing a long term life together. Yeah. You know? and, and I mean, you I know you had had plans last year for oh, yeah. for like an official engagement and everything like that. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, had, I had a flight mm-hmm. back in March 2020. Mm-hmm. And for anyone mm-hmm. who Did anything happened in March of 2020. You know, I think everyone locked down and that's what happened. Yeah. Uh, And, you know, during that time it was very stressful. It was, I was, you know, had paid for the ticket and I had planned everything I had in my head. I was like, you know, uh, uh, there was a specific restaurant that we had went to when we were in London Mm -hmm. uh, the last time I had visited. And it was this really fancy French restaurant. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and what was funny, it was when we went there, it was a very last minute put in the reservation. And I'm glad that I did that. Cause otherwise we wouldn't have gotten in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There was no wait list. It was just like, you either have reservation or no. And, <laughs> um, and I, I had plans to take her out there and, you know, do a little romantic dinner and proposal, but mm-hmm. COVID stopped that. And, you know, I, 
like everyone else, it was like oh, it's a two week quarantine as we're, you know, still in a half quarantine almost yeah. almost two years in mm-hmm. two years in now well it's not two well, years y- it's year a, year and yeah, some yeah about 18 months or so um sure. <laughs> that two year quarant or not two year two week quarantine but um yeah i waited and i waited and i waited and things just were not getting better and you know one night holly and i we were just having a nice you know movie date online together we'd you know we'd boot up netflix together and then one of us would count off so we'd both be watching at the same time and Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know uh and we were just having a really good time and i was like i just i gotta i gotta ask her because i have i had the ring i had the ring the entire time Mm -hmm. and so i was like i'm just gonna ask her i'm like look i you know i want to make this official between us but you know i'm not there i don't know when i'm gonna be able to be there Right. But let's make plans to move forward. Mm-hmm. Of course, she was like, yes, of course. Mm-hmm. I didn't mail the ring because I was worried it was going to get lost. Right. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, so even still, I have it and I plan to give it to her whenever I yeah, get over there. Don't forget to pack that. No, it's packed. OK. OK. That, good. That, it, that, that it's packed. OK, good. Good. <laughs> um, but but yeah, it COVID definitely put a wrench into a lot of plans that we had. Mm-hmm. Um, I think even originally when we first got engaged, um, we were like, yeah, March, 2021, you know, I think, I think I had told you that, Mm -hmm. that that was kind of the original plan of trying to have a wedding March, 2021, whether it was here in America or over there, we, we were still kind of up in the air about all of that, you know, but that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm Um, but you know, it, if anything, I can see a positive light out of COVID is that uh, the fact that we got through it, you know, being a part, you know, originally when we before COVID, we'd only be apart physically from each other for like maybe six months. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's a long time for a lot of people. But, you know, it's coming up to a year and a half now, you know, of course, we keep in constant contact with, you know, FaceTime and messaging each other and everything like that. But, you know, it, the positive thing that I find out all of this is that our communication is, has become not, you know, a, a cement foundation, but rather mm-hmm. like hardened steel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it, it, we just, we get each other, yeah. you know, and we know how to talk to each other because mm-hmm. of it. So do you think that, uh, I mean, just, because, you know, it's an it's an online, you know, connection that you guys mm-hmm. made originally um, and the technology playing such a big part in mm-hmm. your relationship. Um, I know I know with covid, uh, there were a lot of tools that came out to allow people to actually communicate even more fluidly. Mm-hmm. Um, things like you're talking about where you guys, you know, count down and sh- sh- to, to watch a movie together. I think Netflix now has a feature where you can actually do a, a kind of a joint watch mm-hmm. type thing where you just click a button and it will and you invite people and everybody right. watches at the same time. Right, right, so, I mean, right. advances like that. Um, but having a, you know, an online, not only online, but also long, long distance relationship. 5,000 miles. Yeah, I mean, is that uh, something that you you ever thought was was going to happen as you were growing up? I mean, was oh. that in your well, in your <laughs> mind of what your relationship and what you were looking for? Did oh. it ever cross your mind? No, no. I definitely didn't think I was going to, you know, have an extremely long, long distance relationship with someone. I didn't think, you know, I would be, you know, dating someone from a different country. You know, you can't really fully plan for right. things like this. You, you fall in love, right? you right. know, and that happens on its own. It's kind of one of those things. The heart wants what the heart wants. And, and sometimes the heart doesn't know what it wants until it sees what it wants. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it, it was, it, it's definitely been an interesting journey. And I wouldn't really change. I mean, would I not want COVID to happen? Yeah. Right. But where I am now, would I change anything? No. I'd even go through COVID again, you know, right. to be with her. Wow. 
what do you would you have any advice for folks that may have you know a long distance or or an online uh you know relationship that they're trying to make work like what were the things that worked for you um communication definitely Mm -hmm. forgiveness even more um because a lot of the time, a lot of our talking is in text form Mm -hmm. and that doesn't have emotion behind it, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times words can be misconstrued and, and misunderstood. So, uh, you know, you gotta be careful with what you say and how you mean it. Even Mm -hmm. if in your head, you're like, I was just saying this plainly, you know, they may not read it like that right? because of the emotions they're feeling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're able to, you know, if, if at very least have a phone call, you know, so you can hear each other or, you know, we have FaceTime and Facebook video calls, Zooms, you know, Skype, Discord has video, all that, you mm-hmm. know, that also helps even more is to have those things available for you because um, you see them and yeah, it's like, oh, you're, you're a glass pane away, mm-hmm. but, you know, at least then, you know, you can build that foundation mm-hmm. of, of cause long distance is, is, is hard because mm-hmm. it's like, how do I, sh- you know, there are a lot of people who have different love languages, you mm-hmm. know? Um, for me, I'm very much like my, one of my main ones is just words of affirmation. Mm-hmm. I like being praised for things, mm-hmm. you know, even if it's like, I washed the dishes and good job, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, yay. Uh, whereas like Holly's, you know, love language is very much more physical and just, you know, like snuggles and hugs and stuff like that and holding hands. Mm -hmm. And, and I know that she's missing a lot of that because of the long distance. So, you know, you have to try and find different ways of, of going through that, whether Mm -hmm. it be through cheesy romantic, you know, haikus, poems and stuff like that, or, or even, you know, Hey, I'm making spaghetti tonight make you some spaghetti. Let's throw on lady and the tramp and watch the movie together. Mm -hmm. Cheesy things like that. Like, honestly, it sounds like it wouldn't work and, and help, you know, nurture a lot of those random love languages that aren't being, you know, right. Given, Mm -hmm. but it does. Yeah. Yeah. And I would assume that that visual aspect, like you're saying of, of, being able to do a video call. I mean, the world was entirely engulfed in zoom calls for work, (laughs) um, but being able to actually see body language with someone, you know, to read that by language, to hear the tone Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to just reading the, the words flat on a page Mm -hmm. uh, probably may make a big difference uh, in, you know, how the the relationship might be progressing or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's definitely um, something that I think that a lot of people, again, just just from you know COVID and work uh, reasons, you know, maybe that gives them encouragement to say, you know, maybe they had like, oh, well, this person looks cute. Oh, but they they're so far away that a relationship can be nurtured and fostered um, from a long distance via a you know virtual type of. Uh, you know, video situation. I, if, if anything, I am a full testament of, of that being something that is very possible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are more worried about how much time and effort it takes because it's a lot easier for two people who live in the same town and go see each other on the weekends or every day, you know, mm-hmm. and you're physically there with each other. It's a lot easier to do that. And I think that's, you know, something we as a society have, have definitely like, that is the norm is doing that. Mm-hmm. But with how small the world is becoming nowadays with technology and how connected we are, I, I think for those who are, you know, they're like, they're in either in or interested in a long distance relationship. It's, it's not out of the realm of possibility. It just takes a little bit, you know, a slower approach, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, a lot more time, a lot more effort. And sometimes it can be exhausting, right? you know, cause it's like you physically are just like, ah, oh, I just want to lay down and just watch TV, mm-hmm. but I can't, I have to sit at my desk mm-hmm. upright. Cause that's where my computer is. That's where my camera is. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and I want, I wanted to watch TV with her or him or right. them. Right. And, and, but I can't. Mm-hmm. So physically you're just tired, but you're like, but I have to, I have to work on this thing that I right. love. Right. And it also is in, in your case specifically, there's a huge time difference as well. Yep. Uh, it's like what? Five hours. 90% of the year is five hours. And then like, there are 5% times in the year where they're six and then four. Okay. Okay. So let's average around five hours difference. Mm-hmm. So, so if it's, you've worked all day, you're coming home at 11 o'clock at night. I mean, that's 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. their time. And it's, so it's like, I really would like to talk to you, but it's 4 a.m. I don't want to wake you up in well, the middle of the night to be able to just say, Hey, so right. having to have that extra, you know, mindfulness, Mm-hmm. You know, I definitely, in, again, in your situation can be very, you know, taxing too. Oh, it definitely was. I mean, there was a lot of times where like I had considered waking up, you know, extremely early, like seven in the morning, mm-hmm. you know, or even like five in the morning mm-hmm. to just be able to say good morning let's get a croissant together virtually, mm-hmm. you know, or, mm-hmm. or let's just sit together and talk and have coffee, mm-hmm. you know, but and at the same time, like you said, you know, coming home, I work, you know, work in food and beverage as a bartender, you know, those are late nights. I come home 10 30, 11 o'clock at night, sometimes even midnight. And so, you know, that's three, four, five in the morning for her. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing with Holly that I've learned is that she doesn't care about sleeping. (laughs) Mm. She loves sleeping. But when it came to our relationship, that was something she gave up. Mm -hmm. She valued the time that we had together. Even if it was like a, Hey, I'm just getting off work. You know, I love you. I know you're, you're about to pass right out after you hear me say good night, but you Mm -hmm. know, I just want to call and say that to you. She would wake up and answer the phone anyway. Yeah. You know, or, or for me, you know, I'd be asleep and, and my phone would buzz cause you know, like something would go on and she just needed to hear me. Even if I was just like, you know, sleep talking, <laughs> I would, I would sacrifice that to, to again, fully nurture that relationship right. that we had. Right. So you're talking about um, being a bartender, uh, mm. and, and so so you're you're moving to Cornwall, England. Yep. Uh, what's the name of the village? Plent. Plent. P e l y n t. Plent. Nope, that's not what that spells. But <laughs> it's Cornish spelling. So. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So uh, Cornwall, England. Plent. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you? What are you taking? What do you, what aspirations are you taking other than the relationship, other than Holly? Right. Um, and also uh, Holly's uh, child, Vivi, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a little adorable child uh, that, uh, you know, I've heard your interactions with her, um, <laughs> you know, via some of your talks and stuff. And you're very sweet with her. You're very, uh, very nurturing, very caring for her. But um, and we can talk about that more in just yeah, a minute. Yeah, but yeah. what are you what are you uh, taking to <laughs> Taking to plant. What are you, uh, you going to be? What's that aspiration? What's that dream you're still hanging on to uh, to pursue other than the relationship? Well, I, I've, as of recent years, have gotten extremely into mixology and, and that creativity that you get from that. And, and you know, I, I've been in food and beverage for a, a long time, and it also gives you that, that kind of happiness from serving someone and them enjoying the thing that you've given them. Mm-hmm. But it's more personal because that's mine and not like me going and getting a plate of food that the chef made and here you go, enjoy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm excited because Cornwall, for one thing that I've looked into, it is uh, kind of a central hub for um, ciders and gin mm. um, because Plymouth is within Cornwall and Plymouth has its own distillery. And even for us over in here in America, we, we buy Plymouth gin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you know, England, you know, it's known for gene teas and uh, Pim's cups and, mm-hmm. you know, not watered down beer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, don't, you don't drink beer. No, so. no. That's why I was excited about the cider parts. Mm-hmm. 
one of my trips that I went over there, I think it was one of the first times I went over there. Her family uh, took us to the pub that they live next to. And um, it was actually really, you know, it's not like a bar here where when you just say bar, it's just like kind of sketchy looking. Okay. You know, it's actually a very relaxing place. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it even has like games for kids to just mess around with, you know, mm. whatever. It was it was very family friendly mm-hmm. and, you know, clean and nice. Um, I don't know if every pub is like that, but <laughs> <laughs> the one you went to was. It made the a one, good first yeah. impression. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they had this, uh, I think it was like a strawberry pomegranate cider. Mm. And that's kind of up my alley as far as like if I were to have something that is close to a beer, it doesn't taste like beer. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, so pl- the the plans are to hopefully get on somewhere doing mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, m- mixology, being a bartender, being working at a you know a, maybe a, a country club or an establishment or an estate as a right as a as a mixologist or something right. like or, that, or or even you know. M- I've had a lot of members at the club that I work with. They're like, you should, you know, do either TikTok or YouTube videos of you making cocktails and stuff like that. And, Mm -hmm. and, and maybe even offer classes. And, Mm. you know, I I also considered like if, you know, finding, you know, your nine to five or well, let me nine to five, but you get what I'm saying. A job Mm -hmm. doesn't really work out. Maybe I could try and freelance be like, you know, these are my rates is, you know, Mm -hmm. your wedding bartender or your birthday party or whatever. Right. You know, Right. know because a bar is a bar is a bar mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. <laughs> so um it's just the mixologist and the the talented person behind the bar that makes the drinks come out nice right right yeah. so what else what else are you uh taking with you what other aspirations and uh what's what's one of the things you're looking again aside from the relationship the marriage mm-hmm. the you know the family part of mm-hmm. this what are you what are you looking forward to you're going to be you're moving to an entire different country uh, with different you know rules and regulations right. and government style mm-hmm. and all of this other stuff but it's also you know, uh, an ancient country, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, you're so close to other places, uh, uh, you know, so obviously like travel seems to be very easy. But but what are you personally looking forward to doing? I mean, like you said, travel uh, is really easy over there. I'm I'm really hoping that we'll be able to kind of make a um, a, a stop over to Ireland. You know, we have you and I, we have Irish descent and I I've always, always, always wanted to go over there. Yes. Fun fact, <laughs> little like, I, I want to say you were like maybe five, four or five years old. And, uh, I think we picked you up from school or something like that. And you're just kind of sitting in the back seat in the, in the car seat. And it's like, and you're just kind of looking downtrodden, just kind of, it's like, what, what's wrong, buddy? You're like, I just want to go home. And like, well, we're on the way home, buddy. No, to Ireland. <laughs> it's like, okay, buddy, you've never actually been there, but that's sweet. So yeah, it'd be cool for you to actually finally Find, make it that, home. That childhood dream is <laughs> finally being make realized. It, <laughs> make it home. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, I, I think when I told Holly about really wanting to go there, she was like, yeah, we just get on a quick ferry trip and boom, we're over in Ireland. And I'm like, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's very much still a, uh, that fire inside of me of making it over there. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, um, uh, her family makes like yearly, like family vacations. They go to France a lot. They went to Italy two years ago before COVID, mm-hmm. um, you know, and there's, you know, we can go to Germany or Sweden or, you know, there, there, there's just Europe, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it's just right there. And, and so the traveling aspect is definitely extremely exciting, mm-hmm. especially for someone like me who up until, dating Holly never left the country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) So to be able to go to all of Europe right there in the palm of my hand is very exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, But you know, I'm, I'm a very friendly person. I'm open. I'm just, I'm excited to just take in just all that I can here in this culturally rich, Mm -hmm. you know, country and Mm -hmm. just enjoy life, you know? Yeah. What uh, what are your fears on the other side of that coin? Then what are you what are you scared of? What is what are the things that are kind of uh, you know poking at you a little bit? And like 
well, up front is, is making sure my stuff gets over there, <laughs> you know, checking in all of these bags and hoping that the airport does not lose them as I would be very distraught. But Holly and I had discussed that if anything does happen, we will fix it. We'll, right. You know, we'll save up and, and get what we need back. You know, it's no problem. We'd already talked about that, but I mean, uh, you know, you don't really think about it and you know, England and America were friendly, you know, we're, you know, descendants of each other or, you know, one way, <laughs> but, there you go. right. But, you know, there's always, you know, worry of nationalists, mm-hmm. you know, who I'm, I'm American. I sound American and you know, I'm worried that if I go over there, you know, I'm just going to be ostracized because of being American. Right. Right. You know, and I'm not going to say that's like, the big fear or anything like that. I don't really think I have thought or had any real big fears about living over there, Mm -hmm. you know, but just on the the thinking about it, it's like it could happen. Yeah. It's just something that's there. And I I would think you would be uh, remiss if you didn't at least have that in the back of your head, you know, I mean, that's what that helps those kind of little bits of spidey sense help you to survive, you know, it's that survival thing. And, you know, what I'm saying is like, you know, fears, uh, you know, just you, it's, it's the start of a new life. There's mm-hmm. a lot of excitement around that, right. but, but you know, is there any other parts of that? That's like, ah, what, what, you know, um, parenting, Yeah, you know, I, uh, like we had said earlier, you know, Vivi is, is Holly's first child from her marriage, you know, and her only child. Mm-hmm. Um, but as you said, I'm, I'm extremely sweet and everything to her. And that, that is something that, you know, it being in the relationship, something I, I really wanted to try and be like, you know, I want to be the father that was never there for her, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, cause he dipped out pretty much as soon as she was born, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so there's a lot of fear on parenting. Okay. I know no one knows exactly how to do it. Yeah. Fully. 100%. Because every child is different. Every child has different needs. Every child has different parenting styles that work for them, mm-hmm. you know, and, and at the very, at, at the very end of the day and something that I've, I've gone to realize, and I know you have had this thought before is that, and you tell me too, is that, you know, you just want the absolute best for them. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to protect them, but you want them to experience things so that they can become a person who is not afraid of everything and who can just go out and live their best life. Right. You know, there's a lot, you know, I'm coming into her life. I came into her life when she was like three and a half years old. So Mm -hmm. it was very much that whole baby into toddler stage that was just gone, Mm -hmm. you know, that I didn't experience, you know, but she's becoming a person and, you know, it's exciting to see that. And I'm excited But at the same time, I'm nervous. It's like, you know, I don't want to say anything wrong. I don't want to do anything wrong because, you know, it's like, I don't know how to help you. (laughs) Right. right. (laughs) Sorry. But I mean, uh, to to give you any fatherly advice is like, yes, you're you're there when you don't want to do anything wrong. But also sometimes you you have to do what you know is right, Mm -hmm. even if the child is not going to like it. Oh, you know, and you can't parent based on the child's reaction to what you're doing. So, you know, when there are times where you have to correct or you're like, we can't afford this thing and you're going to throw a fit, stop throwing a fit. We (laughs) just don't have the money. You know, maybe that's something we could save up for, for something else. You know, there are, and those, those are the times that break your heart because, you know, you want to provide every little thing. So don't, don't take it. Don't be so hard on yourself mm-hmm. when you have to make those decisions. Right. Uh, hopefully, at some point, they will understand why you are doing these things. Right. Hopefully, at some point, they will understand the love behind it and the motivation behind that mm-hmm. thing that they hated that you did. Right. So, uh, thankfully, you know, um, I have Holly. And, and we've had long into the wee hours of her morning and my night discussions of, of parenting. And we even, 
or listening to a parent podcast together just to kind of get, you know, outside, you know, advice and, you know, all this stuff. And it's very, you know, kind of eye opening and, and, you know, perspective of mm-hmm. things. Uh, so it, thankfully it's not like I'm going in alone, right. you know, I have someone who's been there for a while who can help me support until I get into my stride of everything. So, but you're, you're absolutely right of you parent and hopefully one day they'll understand why you did the things that you did and accept it. Yeah. I'm still hoping for that for you for someday. <laughs> Maybe once you've been parenting, you know, Vivi for a little while, you'll, you'll I'll get a random text, but like, yeah, <laughs> sorry. You, you're right. My be, my be, my, my be. <laughs> All right, Jacob, uh, this is the point in the podcast where we like to dive a little bit deeper. Uh, this is something that, that I deal with, uh, the sadness, bad days, depression, anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, but we all, as humans, deal with this in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, and I think it's a great unifying thing. It, it, it itself sucks, but the fact that we all go through it is a unifying thing. So that we know that we're not alone. Um, for you... Um, what do you do to stay positive and to keep the dark at bay? Well, a lot of it comes from, you know, I, when I was younger, I, I never really expressed my feelings. Um, and, and it wasn't against anyone why I did that or, or for whatever reason, it was a personal thing that I just dealt with was, you know, dealing with my own feelings. Um, but, over time dealing with the depression I deal with and, and the sadness and the worry and the, and the anxiety and everything really boiled down to a lot of like mental strengthening, you know, uh, of, of accepting it's there, mm-hmm. but I don't need it to punish me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. There's still days you lay down and you're just like, I just don't want to get up, you mm-hmm. know, for me, one day is like that. Sometimes I'll just I'll be like, okay, I'm going to just nap for another hour mm-hmm. or 30 minutes, depending. Mm-hmm. But after that, I'm going to get up, I'm going to go take a shower, brush my teeth. And, you know, at the very least, make, see if any of my friends are online mm-hmm. and, and be around people. Mm-hmm. You know, that way I don't hear it. Right. Right. Uh, I, I'm a, I'm, I play video games a lot. So that was a lot of my vice to escape it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I, I've accepted it's there. I, I know it's there. I deal with it. But, it you know, when I say I escape, it, it's not like I'm running away from it. It's more of like you're going to continue saying what you're going to say. I'm not really listening. I'm just playing these games. And enjoying myself. Right. You know. Um, so it, it's. It, I don't know. It's really hard to explain when I say that, uh, you know, it's the mental strength that I've gained over dealing with it, mm-hmm. you know, and it sounds like, oh, you just dealt with it by yourself. And and I did. But I felt I feel like that doesn't work for everyone. Right. You know, there are people who, who need someone who is there constantly, you know, just checking on, Hey, you okay. You know, and that is nice on those really, really dark days. I, I've had to call out to my friends sometimes on those really, really dark days, but for the regular shadow it's it's just walking with my shadow, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's just what I've gained with dealing with it, you know, is, is acceptance of it. Mm-hmm. So kind of, you take the power away from it by acknowledging that it's there. Right. It's like, hey, I've, I see you. I recognize what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to let you do that. Right. And it'll still talk back at you about it. Mm-hmm. But at that point, it doesn't have any more power. It doesn't hold you anymore because you've, you've seen it.
All right, Jacob, this is the third segment of the show. It's time now for the Fast Five. Fast Five. Fast Five. Fast Five. Fast Five. All right, yeah, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't have a theme song for it. I'm still working on it. <laughs> Got to work my music guy. We'll see if we can get that thing going for you. But this is Fast Five, powered by Poddex. It's an app created for podcasters, where it's uh, conversation starters, interview starters. Uh, th- but it's also great if you ever have to speak in front of your Rotary Club or anything like that. Uh, it's great icebreakers that you can use just to bring up in conversation. Uh, it's an app created by my friend uh, Travis Brown. And uh, you can get physical decks. They've got the app that we're going to use here. But uh, if you go to ChewingTheFatBR.com, to get your pod decks, you get 10% off by using the promo code Ooh. CHEW. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the randomizer here. And uh, I just need you to give me the first answer off the top of your head for the questions that come up as they do. No wrong answers. All right. And we'll go ahead and get going here. If you were a superhero, what would your power be? And why? Spider-Man powers. I've always loved Mm Spider-Man. And, you know, I know that's a big bundle of powers, you know, the strength, the speed, the, you know, almost regenerative powers. But, you know, if we were to just say his main power, swinging around spider webs, I would love that. And my reason why is it's very freeing. You know, Mm. when you watch his movies or read his comics, he's just freely swinging around. And and, and it seems like he has nowhere he couldn't be. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I love that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Number two. <laughs> All right. How many streaming services are you currently subscribed to? How many do you bum off other people? Okay. All of them. <laughs> uh I think you subscribe to zero. Well, bum all. Well, <laughs> no, I, I think I'm subscribed to Spotify. Um, if that counts as a streaming service, yeah, you know, streaming yeah. music. Yeah. Um, and podcast. Right. And podcast. Um, and I pay for that myself, but I'm pretty sure with Netflix, Hulu, Disney plus, um, and mm. yeah, I, you, mm. I bum off them with yeah, you. As soon as you leave the country, you know, that's cut off. Right. No, wait, wait, please. Yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> all right. Number three. What brings you joy? My joy comes from being able to bring joy to others. I know that sounds like something that, or, you know, people say you need to bring happiness for yourself. Don't seek happiness in others. But it, at the core core of who I am, I'm happiest when I'm making others happy. Yeah. You have a very servant heart, as they say. So that's, that makes perfect Perfect sense to me. All right. Number four. What could you do all day and not consider it a waste of time? Video games. Okay. <laughs> and watching anime. It's not a waste of time no. at all. You Mm-mm. just do that all day. I could. And I think I have before. <laughs> Honestly, I, I think I, I had once when I was off work, no one was in the house. You know, I think it was I, I think it was actually also when Holly was on vacation. <laughs> mm. So I had no one that needed me. Mm-hmm. I just played video games and watched anime all day. Very cool. All right. And number five. I think you're going to have to think about this one. Oh, God. <laughs> what was the last book you read? The last book I read, mm-hmm. actual uh, physical book. Does <laughs> no, 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 no. Does does um like not physical paper book, but if I had it on my phone, sure, sure. Okay, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, okay. See, I thought you were. I thought for sure you were going to say a D and D Dungeon Master's Guide or something like that, and I was like, that doesn't really count as a book. I would say that, but you know, I know that doesn't actually count as book. There are really great stories in it, though, but. When it's the idea, when someone says read a book, I I consider that cover to cover. And for those, I don't necessarily read cover to cover. Okay. Okay. So Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, huh? Oh, yeah. You really like that? Oh, it's a fantastic series. I I have audiobooks for all of the books, Mm -hmm. except for the one that was written after he died. Mm -hmm. I don't have the and more or or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. But his original set, I have an audiobook form and I have 
the ultimate hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy, which has all of the books in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I only read the the first book, which was the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it is a hilarious space adventure, Yeah, you know, through time and other dimensions. As soon as you get to the other books. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great book though. That's a great Douglas Adams. Great one. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Jacob, that's it. That's the end of the fast five. And that is it for the show. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes. This is the day that you're actually leaving out. I don't know when the show is going to actually air, but yeah, this is the day we're packing you up to take you to the airport. So uh, it was important for me to have you here. Uh, oh, I'm getting choked up to have you here, <laughs> you know, in the studio one last time. Uh, because I don't know when you're coming back. I mean, I feel like you will, but you know, right. we you know, we don't know when, when you're coming back. So thank you so much for taking a few minutes uh, to be here with me in person uh, so that I could have this. Right. Um, if folks want to follow you on your further adventures, mm-hmm. uh, where can they find you on social media? Uh, you can find me at Instagram.com backslash Jake the Tarbender. Uh, you can also find me on Twitch at twitch.tv backslash Jake So Great. So look for Jake So Great on Twitch and Jake the Tarbender on Instagram. Mm-hmm. You can also find all of uh, Jake's links in the show notes here. Um, thank you. It's It's been the honor of my life to be your dad, buddy. You're still going to be my dad, even I, though I'm gone. I, I know. I know that. But, you know. <laughs> It's a hard day for me. Leave me alone. Okay. Punch you in the face. No, wait, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. If you would like to support this podcast, you can buy me a coffee at chewingthefatbr.com. Thank you so much for being here, and I look forward to the next time when we sit a spell and chew the fat.